Hi, this is Tech again, and today I want to make a BIOS modding guide for 775 ASUS and ASRock motherboards, as well as any other boards that happen to use AMI BIOS. Now, this is going to be a guide of how to insert a CPU microcode into the BIOS. Uh, the most popular reason why you would do this is to run 771 chips on 775 motherboards. So I have a little spreadsheet prepared here with uh, basically your compatibility. Uh, the top four chipsets here are what I would consider the only viable ones for overclocking or extreme overclocking rather I should say. Um, and my columns here are LEX 5000 series, so that includes stuff like the X5270, uh, that would be a dual core high clocked one, or a E5450, that is a really popular uh, quad core option. Now, second column here is 5000 series without any prefix, that would be uh, Conroe based chips like. Uh, 5110 or 5160. Uh, that, that's only dual cores. I just separated them out because of some edge cases here. Uh, the last one is E, L and X 3000 series Xeons. Now for E that would be uh, something like the E3113. That is basically a core to do E8400 but as a 771 Xeon. Uh, L series, that's mostly the L3014, uh, single core Xeon, absolutely legendary chip, highly sought after in overclocking circles because it is uh, the fastest single core, uh, native single core CPU out there. Um, and for X series would be something like the X3363, now that's just the X3360, but uh, instead of 775, it's on 771. So, as you can see, for our first series here, uh, PS series chipsets are compatible with everything. X series chipsets don't run the uh, X5000 or the 5000 series with a prefix at all. Uh, that's kind of unfortunate, but kind. So far, can't do anything about it. Um, this here, my orange one here, is just here because some people, including me, have managed to get some uh, 5000 without prefix chips to post and boot on some uh, X series chipset boards in some cases, but this is anything but reliable. So I would absolutely not recommend doing this. It's just here so that I uh, basically don't oversimplify the information to a point where it's it's wrong. Anyways, uh, let's move on to non exclusive relevant chipsets. Uh, I just included these in case you stumbled across this video uh, looking for um, looking for something to upgrade your retro gaming PC or even something like a, I don't know, internet or just low end uh, daily. So stuff like this would include the P43. P43 is basically a uh, cut down uh, P45 chipset. So it, it works uh, as well as the G series chipsets because they are also based uh, on the P series, but basically with a IGP. Uh, so they have graphics. Uh, for Enforce, I, I put yellow here because I'm not 100% sure which Enforce chipsets support Xeons and which ones don't. Uh, I know that Enforce uh, 680i does support them. So if you have an Enforce chipset, I would uh, suggest just Googling something like uh, 771 to 775 mod and then your chipset. Usually you can find uh, out if, if someone else managed to get it uh, to run before you. Uh, the last one here on the list is just here because, well, this is exclusively for 
overclockers basically. Uh, the Vaya PT8880 uh, also Pro and Ultra version. This is basically only here because it's on the SROC 4 core dual and 775 dual boards. Uh, those are used because they have DDR1 and EGP. So with these there is also no problem in running Xeons if you want to. However, the real reason to do 771 mod to this board is probably if you have a QX9775. Uh, because those boards don't do a lot of FSB and basically uh, only unlock chips are viable here. Anyways, let's move on to the microcode stuff itself. Uh, first off, my way of finding out how, well, which one microcode we need. Uh, I have here an example. I would suggest you just basically look up your CPU on HWBot, go to the CPU frequencies, uh, and then you can see your CPU ID tab here. What is interesting in this case is this row here, so your family, model, and stepping. Uh, what we want a microcode for would be family 6, model 6, uh, model F, stepping 6, so a 6F6 microcode is what we need to run this Xeon 5130. So for the tool we want to use here, uh, it's this here, the MM tool. Um, I'm going to put a, a link to this in the description so you can download it yourself because with some of the tools it's kind of hard to find them online these days so better just doing that. Uh, let's open it, load our BIOS ROM. Now I already have a modded one here, I don't want it, I want the freshly downloaded uh, P5K1201, that's the newest BIOS for the Asus P5K. Go to CPU patch tab. Now you have here your BIOS microcode section. Basically, as you can see, we already have a 6F6 here. But there is also another thing you have to keep in mind, and that's the platform type here. Uh, 0, 1 or 10 means it's a desktop uh, chip. And our Xeon is obviously a server chip. Now we have down here 04, and I'm not sure why 04 is in here, but 04 is uh, the server platform. So my, my guess why we have some 04s here would be something like the uh, X3000 series. There is a uh, 775 based ones as well, and they probably just uh, put them as server platform or defined them as server platform at Intel. So anyways, once you have your microcode section open, what you want to do is browse for your microcode. Now I have a complete folder here and I'm going to zip this folder and leave a link to it in the description because well, I'm not sure where I found it, but this basically includes all the 45 and 65 nanometer microcodes. So we want 65 for our 5130. Uh, here we have 6F6. And we want the platform 04. So open this one. See, uh, make sure that you have uh, insert patch data here. Then click apply. And it should be at the bottom of our table here. As you can see, 6F604. Uh, also for the revision, that is something you can also use this tool for. Let's go back to our 6F6 desktop microcode here. We have revision CB here. And if we browse our folder here, we can check if we have something newer. As you can see here, we have platform 01, uh, revision D4. So that would be newer. So basically you can also use this tool to um, update BIOSes where the manufacturer didn't or just kind of disappeared or didn't support any more modern CPUs. So you can, for example, uh, get a BIOS that has a pre-45 nanometer compatibility only and add 45 nanometer compatibility. So 
Also another note, uh, a lot of BIOSes also work with the CPUs without the microcodes installed, but you need the microcodes to have uh, certain extensions like a uh, specific example on the L3014, you can run it on on uh, X48 board without any microcode in the BIOS, but it won't uh, support SSE 4.1, which is uh, a huge performance boost in certain benches. Anyways, uh, once you have your microcode inserted here, we have it here, you want to click save as, and I'm going to navigate out of our 65 nanometer and back to our 5K. I'm going to name this P5K Xeon uh, and save it. And that's it. Now have, go up here to P5K, now have a modded BIOS. Now, for flashing this, you can use the uh, in BIOS flash utility from Asus, which I'm not sure what it's called right now, but uh, you can use that. Or, especially if you're uh, playing around a lot with BIOSes yourself, I would highly recommend you get a hardware flasher, something like a SPI flasher, like a CH3450. Uh, 341A, or if you want something more high-end, uh, something like a, a TL-866 uh, Mark II. Those are flashers that can also flash BIOS chips that don't have a serial interface like SPI or I2C. So, uh, highly recommended if you play around with BIOSes a lot yourself. Anyways, I hope you found this little tutorial here helpful and I wish you a lot of luck with playing around with 771 Xeons because they're really fun chips. Bye!